On the breakfast today, former Kaduna lawmaker Shiru Sani reveals what probably angered the northern governors, made them insist on retaining presidency in 2023, speaks of how it can get to the south. Also on the breakfast, data core costs to go up as telecom union proposes 40% tariff hike. And like always, we will be reviewing the major stories making headlines across national dailies. Good morning to you. This is The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I trust you're doing well. My name is Justin Akadonye. And I am Mercy Boko. Beautiful morning and it's really great to be back on your screen. Yes, it feels good to feel stronger. <laughs> I, feel alive yes, again. I just saw you smiling <laughs> while I was reading. You what know, happened there? I think a miracle happened. <laughs> you don't have an idea what's going on here, but I can relate and I understand. And we just say glory be to God. Okay, I'm going to break it down. I know why Miss was like, yesterday I was all like, Good morning, welcome to the breakfast. <laughs> Yesterday I was actually under the weather. You know how it is. The show just has to go on. And today, Mess was like, "Okay, where is this guy coming from?" I don't know. Now, pretty probably visited one Babala, and then. Oh, Deo, you have come. <laughs> Let us just head straight to top trending for this morning. A whole lot is trending this morning, and I will start uh, off with. Um, Ah, employment. Who is actually responsible for employment? Is it government or is it their responsibility to just make the enabling environment? Well, this is actually according to the governor of um, AKT State, Kayade Fahemi, as he uh, declared for presidency yesterday. He was asked about what he would do, Mercy, you know, to you know, curb the issue of unemployment. And he now said that it is not... Um, the responsibility of government to provide these jobs that uh, government's responsibility respon ah, English Hado. government's responsibility is to provide enabling the environment. environment you know so so I actually saw that and he made the headlines because uh, a lot of people had to put that up but now for me okay let's start on this premise mm. if you look at the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria 1999 as amended uh, section 14 if i'm not mistaken it talks about it's, uh, let's see if I can, okay, I would try to read it without okay. Don't just looking at the, the making, Don't no, without, without actually making, this morning. so he says that um, it would be, I mean, the primary responsibility, the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. I mean, that's me reading that part of the constitution, mm -hmm. section 14, subsec, I mean, you have the B section of it, okay? Yes. And that's what he says. So I take that again. Security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Mm. So what does and welfare so you, mean? Exactly. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Security of the people and welfare. Welfare is welfare. Now, if you look at it, it talks about the health, you know, the happiness, general well-being of the people. Yeah. And that cannot be exclusive of employment. Mm -hmm. So uh, as much as I understand where, you know, Kyle Defiam is coming from, the governor, uh, but you, you cannot take it out that government has a role as well to play in employment. So you cannot say, oh, it's not government's responsibility to provide employment or to create jobs, right? Um, it is not directly government's responsibility, but you can also not take out the fact that government has a role to play. Mm. Now, firstly, if you look at it, the provision of as government, as government would exist in different strata. And in Nigeria, you find out that there are civil jobs. So um, government also provide that. So you have civilian, civil service. Civil service jobs. Civil service jobs. I mean, people who are employed to work yes. uh, for the government. Because at the end of the day, if you have a structure, if you have whatever it is, you have a dream, you cannot achieve all of that. And that's why in basic economics or business, you find out that you have different resources. So a combination of, um, you could probably have the material resource. I mean, you could have, you know, whatever it takes for you to achieve a certain goal, but you will need people 
So it's a combination of human and material resource or resources to achieve a certain goal. Now, government cannot be taken out of the equation. Government might not be responsible directly for providing employment, but does not mean that they cannot provide. They're also there. Now, and I understand the fact that at all, at all ends, I mean, the argument would always be that government should provide enabling environment. And that's it. So, but when you even look at that part of the constitution for Nigeria, I don't want to talk about India, I don't want to talk about another country, but the constitution of the Federal Republic, it talks about welfare. Welfare is encompassing. It talks about everything, security, and welfare would be the concern of government. Of and so, yes, government at all levels should be responsible. Yes, we understand that uh, people would say, Government is not a good manager of anything. So you know how to say, oh, it's not government's business. Provide an enabling environment. And if government feels, because if you look at it, the ease of doing business, let's not forget that we've had it a couple of times. And in 2022, there's been all of the assessment. And you can relate with that. Yeah. We're not doing very well with the ease of no, doing business. And so, yes, he's very correct. To some extent, government has a role to provide an enabling environment. So you have I the not private take sector. The responsibilities from government completely. The re the re Responsibility from government cannot be taken away in At any all. sense. Yeah, because, I, first of all, even if you provide a enabling environment and the people are not getting jobs, it is still your responsibility. For instance, even if you say you're not providing direct employment you know, for Nigerians, you talked about the civil service, uh, you know, those working directly for the government, and the government is paying that that's employment one. And uh, projects uh, that governments um, do over time, you know, you will still need the people, maybe direct labor, indirect labor, to come work on such product, infrastructural development and all that. If you do infrastructural development one way or the other, people get to be employed in those projects as well. So I think that it's on the premise of having the private sector thriving. Okay. That's where, you know, the governor bases his argument on that it's not government's responsibility to provide, you know, yeah. uh, create jobs. I mean, to create jobs or provide employment. But like we rightly stated, if the environment is not friendly, uh, you can have foreign investors coming in. You also can have, you know, local investors thriving in business. It's a lot. So yes, if people are not employed, you blame the government for it. Because mm -hmm. however you want to look at it, whether you say they provide enabling environment <laughs> or whether you say they provide jobs directly or indirectly, government is in the business of governing people and ensuring that lives, security, and the welfare of the people are priority. So yes, uh, he needs to include all of that in the. Yes, argument. if you look at it again, I don't know. Just, yeah. They, for instance, in Lagos, they have a lot of uh, paraphernalia of office and all of that. I, I mean, there's even, I don't know if it's a department or a full blown ministry, uh, wealth creation and all that. So basically, the whole idea is centered of, um, on um, creating wealth for the people. And somehow it still talks about. Um, job opportunities, uh, you know, extensions uh, at which uh, the people can actually go, you know, how you can actually get finances and all of that to make your own jobs or your own business better. In a way, government has no, a whole no, lot to No, do. but if you look at it, the proponent of this theory at the end of your this ideology hmm. is that government should just not be in the business of all of that. I mean, just stay and do your bid hmm. so everybody has a role to play. And if government has lived up to our expectation, especially the Nigerian government, yes. of ensuring that there's a friendly environment. Now, when we talk about environment being friendly, it's, it talks about government policies. What are, you know, what are the policies that we have on ground? Do we have friendly policies? Uh, these policies, especially when you talk about taxation. Are they very friendly when you talk about security? I know um, businesses, I, I know a lot of persons who have talked about their businesses that have collapsed mm -hmm. in different parts of the country because of the security challenge that we're faced with. And so when you have all of this business, so for instance, you have a company, you have an organization that definitely exists because they want to render a service or you know sell a product. But before they can achieve all of that, I mean, to achieve all of that, they will need people. And so that's a means of, you know, providing employment. You remember that, at co I mean, when COVID came, the world actually has experienced the effect of COVID-19. I mean, we're still trying to recover from all of that. Several, you have several companies that downsize at the time. People lost their jobs. I mean, you have a lot of people, um, salaries were reduced. So it, it's a lot. A lot. A uh, lot. And, and, and I'm saying that for those who would, 
we need to do better but i know that nigerians are on top of the game is not long in business as usual but we're hoping that this can be very sustained and this can help us achieve you know a result at the end of the, day, the day because we're grappling with a lot if you're grappling with the system just like we talked about yesterday a system where you say a structures uh, you have powerful men in the system who are overriding the structure and so you have a weak institution and then you rather have strong men and that's why we're not having the result that we desire yeah. but i think that as a presidential aspirant and those who are vying for political office we need to be on top of our game we need to understand the dynamics of government and economies as well mm -hmm. because you can't not take that out entirely but we wish them well because you know the political parties at the end of the day will choose who becomes the flag bearer all right, moving away from employment opportunities and the role of government, uh, let's talk about um, terrorism and terrorism financing. Uh, this has been in the news for quite some time, and it is actually resurfacing. It is as though uh, someone who has died is actually uh, still uh, being blamed, or that's what it is really. Uh, the Ahmed Nasruddin has been linked to terrorism financing over time, although uh, the company that he founded uh, over time, that's NASCO, had actually come out to say that um, they had been cleared you know, by the U.S. government that the funding of terrorism claims is actually false, but it is actually being drawn again this time around. Uh, another report, and um, Nami, uh, you know, personal, is actually quoted as saying that um, he actually is linked to terrorism financing. It is as though that um, he isn't going to stay dead. He'll keep on coming alive. His name, that is. See, see um, it's um, a very sensitive one. Mm. I mean, and if you talk about NASCO, I'm sure you can relate because growing up as a child, I mean, I was exposed to some product of NASCO. You talk about the biscuits that you have to take. Right? You don't know NASCO mm. products? I do know them. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> so, it, I mean, it's really um, heartbreaking. You know, for you to hear that I'm growing up now as an adult, I'm here talking and then you have to say, okay, so the group managing director or the founder, uh, well, I'm not sure they even exist or they're very great again with their product, but the sum association. So we move away from that, but we talk about what really happens for every time there's a report. Every time you have a report about uh, a governor, there's a certain time where you have a report saying a certain the governor to uh, is financing you know, terrorists. What has the Nigerian government done about it? We exist as a sovereign entity. And because we exist as a sovereign entity, Justin, you, that, that's why if you have some interference from different companies, say, oh, Nigeria is a sovereign entity. You don't need any busybody. You don't need people trying to meddle in our business. We can control our affairs. But you look at that. What have we done with all of this report and all of this? Have we further investigated? Have we verified? Or have we arrested this person? So every day, and I remember that a certain journalist, uh, David Hundei, uh, made a report where he talked about uh, conflicts and uh, conflicts, and I, I don't remember how he puts it, but of course that publication was being put out there. Hmm. Yeah, he talked about conflicts, conflicts for, for jihad. jihad. Yes, and but the question is, what do we do with all of this information? We have been trying to understand why crime and criminality and insecurity persist in the system despite the fact that we have the um, state apparatus to fight all of this. I mean, you have the Nigerian police, you have the military, you have everything. But what's going on? We, we do nothing with all of this information. It's quite unfortunate. This is not the first time. I remember it's not the first also time. You, you have, there was another publication from the UAE government where, you know, six Nigerians were mentioned as being sponsors of terrorists. At the end of the day, what happened to those six? No, there, were, there was a lot of back and forth following <laughs> that report. You had different explanation from different quarters, especially from the government. Mm. And it is sad. So it, it brings us back to the question that if you have um, terror uh, exceeding more than 24 hours in a sudden climb, then the government is responsible, is behind it. There's no, there's no explanation. Why are we not doing have the needful? Need Why are we not? moving on with the information that we have with it's all of the intelligence each day they they bring reports so people talk about it people you know raise a whole lot of dust on social media the lots of talk lots of uh, you know advocates at the end of the day like you would you had said 
everything is actually uh, you know swept under the carpet and um, for a while it will just douse then maybe another report will just come and take over then again it happens and uh, it's as though we're just on a merry-go-round at the end of the day names are mentioned uh, reports are being put out there and uh, no one is actually meant to face the wrath of the law well and it just also gives room to the um, those behind the conspiracy theory that government might just be aiding and abating all of these elements. You were talking about those who are sponsoring and those who are committing this crime. And that's why we haven't gotten any result. What other explanation do you have? Mm -hmm. It's the question, because at this point in time, you have such information in, in Senate climbs, you will have government moving and acting Things have done. People, uh, people would have been arrested, the people linked, a whole lot of um, expose would have been brought out of all of that. And, um, you know, they would have um, done something that would actually serve as deterrent to people who may actually have um, one link or the other, who may want to continue. They would just have to discontinue. But let's just leave... Um, Ahmed Nasruddin and let him uh, stay uh, where he is uh, and then talk about something again that's equally uh, trending. Ah, Mercy, you talked about uh, your presidential ambition as I well. Never. <laughs> when are you declaring? I, I've never talked about anything. Mercy, you say you just might declare for presidency. No, no, I mean, that's uh, you far from it. Huh? You know, no, because there are several declarations almost on a daily basis. People are declaring. So for the one that's very interesting for me, it's, you know, with the APC, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of classes who <sighs> just the APC. So you have a lot of governors and I'm, I'm already wondering set. what's going on. Why do you have, why do you have, so yesterday we had that answer. It's more like it, it's normal in a climb where you have some governors that will always be an aspiration to want to become the president. But really, it, it's like every Basically, other you know, day. This aspiration is not just aspiring. You aspire, you drop 100 million naira. <laughs> <laughs> the party is becoming the party is becoming very wealthy, and uh, let's see what they do with all of that amount. Mm. So maybe, yesterday, maybe maybe with time the Nigerian government would have to go borrow from the APC. Like, you know, you, since they have a lot, we, we know, don't need to borrow their... from the. If you have how many governors do we have now, or how many persons have declared, you know, on the APC? You can the name them. Yesterday was uh, uh, the APT, APT state governor. Uh, Kayo defy me, uh, former governor of um, Edo State, also declared yesterday. Uh, what's his name? I'm, uh, former governor. That's uh, Adams Oshiomale. Mercy. I don't know. Maybe my uncle might just declare tomorrow. No, but for me, I really don't know what it is. But fingers are crossed, and I'm, I'm very interested in the declaration, especially if you look at the APC and the fact that you have a lot of governors. Who are declaring their intention? I really don't know what this is. It, it could it be just the divide and rule um, uh, principle, you know, mm. because you have to divide and rule, divide and conquer. It could maybe, be maybe that. they just they just because wanted the to be on record that uh, aside from being governors, they also had actually, you know, you know, made their intentions known and their aspirations known of wanting to control the machinery of government at the top or the highest level. That's the presidency. So, uh, if you just go back to the announcement of history, uh, if you're talking about those who have you, you, you know, know usually what happens sometimes for aspirant for presidency. because election is, is a game of numbers so mm. when you have a lot of people come out to contest what happens is the votes has been splitted mm. even at the party level so for instance now that you have the APC not decided because it feels like I mean there's no certainty we don't know for sure whether the APC would tilt towards the north or um, the south yes the north or the south or or I mean the north and the south would definitely be having a consensus but mm. no one knows that for sure so Maybe just maybe, you know, the system would be allowed to a direct primary or indirect primary. And what will happen is you're going to have a split of votes. Mm. The votes, the delegates are going to, the votes will be splitted. Mm. That's and what then, it is. It, it, well, so we will split. constantly weaken, um, it would weaken, the, that's what happens. It will weaken the stronger, the stronger candidates. Mm. That's what will happen. So you're going to have different delegates. I mean, one vote to just be going by one. It would definitely weaken and continue to Some weaken. people's chances. Yes chances of you know very strong and dominant um aspirant at the party level and because you, that's what happens mm. so if for instance you have a lot of popular i mean you have a strong popularity in a certain region and you're vying for that position and then you have other persons who have come they're going to split your vote okay. so that's what's going to happen so i i'm i'm already foreseeing that you we might probably just be experiencing a situation where at the party level votes will be splitted amongst delegates 
All right, uh, that's as much as we, I can hear our signature tune. I guess that's as much as we can take on Top <laughs> Trending. We'll take a quick break and return with, uh, you know, off the press in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>